We're Trent and Allie, and the race to build this house before winter is on. Today is a big day. We are finally ready for our very last concrete pour ever. We've done this before, so what's the worst that could happen? The actual worst case scenario is that they've already started pouring and we're not ready for them to pour yet. Nothing's going right. <laughs> terrible day. We're rolling with the punches and hoping for the best. Some water, some shade, maybe a small panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe to our channel if you're not already and come along today as we get one step closer to a cozy cabin in the mountains. From the sunshine on my face So dehydrated Don't know what to say Morning, Frank. How was your food? Was it good? You don't care? It's a pretty chilly morning down here in the valley, which means by the time we get to our property, we're going to be freezing. I think it's going to warm up. I, actually, I think the high today is like 88, but right now it's like 38. So welcome to fall pumpkin spice lattes, freezing your butt off, needing gloves most of the time, all of the things that make fall in Utah fall. These early mornings are not really my cup of tea. Well, also, it's been a while, but at least you look increasingly better. Thanks, babe. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get up to the property. Curtis is going to be there in an hour and 15 minutes, and it takes us about an hour to get there. And then hopefully he's going to get right to work. So we need to get the water lines staked. We need to get everything prepared for him to backfill. I think today's going to go pretty fast. Oh my goodness. It is chilly. But look at this gravel. We have a new pile of rocks. So all of this gravel is gonna go inside the foundation and inside structure number two to level everything off so they can pour the slabs. But I'm gonna go up and start rigging up these water lines, getting them cut to size. All that stuff needs to be ready for Curtis by the time he gets back so that he can start backfilling. Trent, you're looking more and more like a professional contractor. I'm a construction worker. Now. You look like a construction worker. <laughs> How's that working for you? Small hammer, big rebar. It's not working well. Beautiful trees. This doesn't have anything to do with the wall. Okay. They're they're neighbors, but they don't know each other. Okay. So, and actually, the only thing that you're even gonna see is this. Okay. So, what, like, then why I guess isn't that closer to the wall? Because there has to be a stairwell. There's stuff over here. Okay. It's just like such a bummer because I feel like they're behind this stack. There's three feet of wasted space, right? <laughs> well, yeah, but in front of this stack, there's 22 feet of wasted space. Yeah. It's just really interesting to me because all of this construction requires very detailed plans that need to be approved by the county in order to actually do anything. But once you actually get here and start doing construction, it's incredible to me how much wiggle room there is once you're building and you're like well let's just move this over here let's just do it this way and we're like kevin can we do that and he's like yeah that's fine as long as like the drain line is the right angle so that it's still gravity fed it's fine you can put it wherever you want like there's so much room not for error but like room for flexibility that i'm always like well so what's the most efficient thing to do and does everybody change things last minute or is it just us? The only thing that anybody's gonna check is that if it's up to code. And then if it's like structural, obviously a structural engineer would have to sign off on whatever changes that you make. But something like where the plumbing line goes out to the septic tank, they don't care. You're like the king of decision paralysis too. So I feel like yeah. all that room for flexibility is not an advantage for you. Yeah, I'm not having fun right now. <laughs> Perfect. No one saw that. 
Rebar just out and trip me. We've got all the lines correctly in place, installed, ready to be backfilled with gravel so that the concrete can be poured over them. Now we're just waiting for Curtis to show up so he can start with some more excavation, backfilling the walls, the last step in the process before our very last concrete pour ever. I'm so excited. And I think I hear something in the distance. This is Eddie, this is our new addition. Eddie? Oh my goodness, what are you doing? Is he a Jack Russell? Oh my goodness! What are you doing? You're so cute! It's a little wishbone! <laughs> it is a little wishbone! Ah, I love it! Oh. <laughs> so excited! <laughs> is he a Jack Russell? Yeah. He's already jumping, huh? Oh! Oh! oh. oh. Hey guys! Alright, well thank you Gary! Good yeah. to see ya! Hi! Gary is an awesome neighbor. It's actually his property that we've stashed all of our lumber for right now because we have no space on our property and we needed to have our lumber dropped off basically way too early because the lumber prices were just skyrocketing. But he's been an awesome neighbor. We're super happy to have him around. And his new puppy, Eddie, is absolutely adorable. <laughs> Look at that. I've never seen something so beautiful before. Get that truck out of his way. Give this man some space. Machine. I'm excited. Woo! Now he's just got to work as fast and as hard as he can to get all the gravel leveled out and spread. The guys are going to come throw rebar in, and then in the morning we get concrete. When we started this process, I honestly thought that getting our house dried in by winter was totally doable. And I think it still is, but it's just been such an eye-opening experience to see how long construction can take when you have to rely on other people. And it's not to say it's their fault, it's just a really busy time to be constructing a house right now. Curtis was even saying on his way up here just now that 10 other people have been asking him to come over to their place to finish excavation or even to start excavation, you would think that the season would be winding down right now as it gets cooler, but actually people are ramping things up and trying to get projects done at the last minute. So we are really thankful that Curtis came back. He's gonna finish up our job as soon as he can. He is gonna be here for the next few days. Hopefully that means we're on track to start framing next week. Everything is moving very smoothly, I must say. It's amazing how much progress his machine makes in such a short amount of time. It's very relieving. I love him being here. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it still looks like a war zone, things are really coming together. But luckily, while we get ready to break for lunch, we have our own little contraption, which just happens to be today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Moonshade. Moonshade is actually an awning that fits on any car, any truck, any van. They actually designed it for van life, but then they realized after they made it that it's so versatile you can basically use it anywhere. Now we've used it on the side of Terry, the side of the truck, the side of the van. We absolutely love the Moonshade. It's the cheapest awning that you can throw on the side of your van. And like I said, it's extremely versatile. Today, we're gonna be setting it up on the side of our lumber pile. Today we're actually hooking up the moonshade to the straps on the lumber to hold it still and then we're going to stake down these posts so it's going to provide a nice little shaded spot for us to eat lunch. But generally the moonshade comes with suction cups and magnets. These can attach to any window or any metal part of your vehicle to attach the moonshade to. It basically sets up and breaks down in five minutes each. You can attach it to anything. If you guys are interested in checking out Moonshade, you click the link in our description and you guys get 10% off. Or use code Trenton Alley at checkout. Thanks again to Moonshade for sponsoring today's video. Now we're gonna start eating some lunch. Sitting down without the shade, it's like kind of hot and uncomfortable up here. Now that we threw the moonshade up and I got half a sandwich in my belly. Ready for a nap? Ready for a nap.
Should have brought a cot. <laughs> Just move right in. <laughs> <laughs> this is our house now. Yeah. This is the wood that's gonna make our house, so we're just gonna live under it next to it <laughs> until we can build it. I must say this is a pretty luxurious way to eat lunch, but we gotta get back to work. Things are happening. I think our friend John is on his way up right now to drop off some more gravel. Oh. me used to be 10 feet off the ground and super scary to balance on and after Curtis has been here for just half a day it's completely backfilled up to the height of the walls and we can actually walk behind it. it's like having a backyard well look at you Oh, hey. You look quite comfortable over here. Yeah, I've been working hard the past few days. I'm just trying to observe someone else working hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've said this before that I'm really glad we hired out someone to do the excavation. Curtis has been doing this for like 40 years, and I really have faith that he's going to do a good job. Basically, I'm just glad I have someone to count on to do one of the projects, because come Monday, I'm going to be in over my head for at least the next year or two. And that's kind of a daunting thought. I feel great. I'm contracting Trent <laughs> out to build the house and I think that's a very wise decision on my part. <laughs> Right now we're moving on to structure number two and it's gonna have a sloped slab. So basically we have to figure out where that slope's gonna be, mark it where the chalk line, and then Curtis is gonna start leveling that out with the machine. Yeah, so the, the slab out. will sit on this. Yeah, it's 12 inches. Nice. That would have been bad. Things are happening and the weather is holding, which I'm so thankful for. Yeah. Tomorrow is our last pour. Hopefully everything goes according to schedule, no major surprises. And we frame on Monday. And then all of the pressure is on us. <laughs> I'll just give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly me, but us. Anyway, we're gonna get out of here. We'll see you guys bright and early. What's up guys and good morning. It has been a heck of a night. I went and played pickleball with a couple buddies last night and I didn't get home until maybe like 10.30 and then we didn't go to bed until like 11.30 and then today we had to wake up at like 6 a.m. because we got a bunch of errands to run before we get to the property. We got things to do and get in place before they pour concrete today. So there's a lot of stress, a lot of pressure, a small amount of sleep. And let's just say we're running a little late. Wow, guys, let's just say today is not getting off to a great start so far. We're a little rushed. We got up at 6.30 thinking we had plenty of time this morning. We hopped in the car, went straight to Home Depot. We needed to get a special type of drain that we were going to line in front of structure number two in the concrete for when they pour it. 
We forgot to buy it last night on the way home from the property, so we had to do it this morning. Totally fine. We ran in, grabbed some stuff, got back in the car and realized all of the fittings to connect to the end of this channel drain that we just bought were left at the cash registers. We had to go to another Home Depot. It's not the end of the world because it looks like this Home Depot has what we need in stock, but it's definitely eating away at our time this morning. We have a concrete pour scheduled for 9 a.m. And then we just got a text from a friend of mine who lives up near our property saying she just saw a concrete truck and a pump truck pass her house heading up the mountain which means I'm sure they're going straight to our property. They're running super early. We're running super late. Kevin is not gonna be there today, so everything is a little chaotic. Are you up to Joel? Yeah. No, I'm on my way right now. I, I picked up this channel drain that's supposed to go in the slab. Can you give them bolts from Miguel for that wall? Because they put the wrong bolts in here. Can you uh, grab them while you're there? No, I already went. Or you already left home people, huh? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Somebody will have, somebody will have to run down there and grab the bolts then. Okay. I'm not quite there. Okay. See ya. Yeah. See ya. Bye bye. There's an extra footing that needs to be dug inside of structure number two, and Curtis needs to do that. Curtis was supposed to be there at 8:30, and obviously Curtis just called me, and I think uh, he's on his way. So everybody's running late. We got our fingers crossed. That the concrete guys are running late, also. But with our luck, today will be the only time, the only time ever that they are early or on time. <laughs> Sounds like the concrete guys are having issues as well. The stress is high and uh, just got to take a, take a few deep breaths and uh, we're going to be there in a few minutes. Oh my gosh. They're going, huh? Are they? Yeah. Oh my gosh. We're in trouble. We were talking this morning while we were driving up here about, all right, what's the worst case scenario? Probably that the concrete guys are mad that we've made them wait and... Um, that's like probably the worst thing that'll happen is that we've made them wait. But no, the actual worst case scenario is that they've already started pouring and we're not ready for them to pour yet. Nothing's going right. <laughs> it's a terrible day. So concrete has started, but they actually started pouring the floor inside the house, which is the best possible place they could have started because we didn't have to do anything in there. Everything was already set. But now we are panicking because uh, there's a couple more things that need to be installed before they can pour the rest of the structures. I think Trent has it under control, but it's definitely a little bit nerve wracking. Nothing is under control. Um, I'm basically trying to get these fittings glued together so that I can get them attached to the strip drain and we can go drop that inside structure number two. That is very crucial that these drains are in structure number two. And then we've got to dig the footing, which I don't think they dug the footing. Curtis said yesterday, oh, I'll be there in the morning. We'll dig the footing before they pour it. Uh, they're still pouring the basement of the house. Then they'll move on to structure number two. So we do have a little bit of time. However, it's stressful and they've got rebar in the way. So Roberto is not gonna be happy with me because I'm gonna have to make him come over and dig that footing with me. And uh, I don't think he's anticipating doing anything like that right now. Oh 
Oh my goodness, you guys. Things are falling into place slowly but surely. It's still a crazy <laughs> chaotic morning, but um, the house in the, the floor in the house is almost finished being poured and it looks fantastic. The rim board that needed to be covered and secured is done. The strip drain in structure number two is almost done. One of the only main things left that has to happen, and we needed to dig out one more footing. Trent and Roberto are gonna just dig it out with a shovel themselves. I think that's the last big piece of the puzzle this morning. Hopefully it all gets done in time because of course this is the one day that all the concrete has shown up at exactly the right time. We've got plenty to pour, people are ready to go, and we don't wanna hold anybody up more than we have to. How are you feeling? I feel like we got it all. You got it all? I think so. Wow, down to the wire, my friend. <sighs> that tendonite is flaming in both arms. Oh no. These guys are doing a fantastic job. They've almost got the whole house poured and leveled and smoothed out, and then they're gonna move on to structure number two. It's a good thing other people here know what's going on besides us, because if it were up to us, things would just stay a nightmare all the time. We would be in trouble for sure. <laughs> going really well but wow what an insane morning as someone who's done this before you guys tell me it gets less stressful I don't there, know. there is a I light at the end of the you. tunnel oh my god sometimes the light fades and it seems like it's further away but eventually you get there well, this is exciting Allie. Yes. Yeah. exciting and very nerve-wracking <laughs> Those guys are awesome. It's such a gamble, I guess, really anytime you buy a property somewhere, whether it's a house or just a piece of land, if you're gonna have good neighbors or any neighbors, and we have been so fortunate so far to meet some incredible people that live nearby, that will be here for a lot of the winter, that will be able to help us out if we get stuck. We can help them out if they get stuck. It's just nice to know that there's really good people around. Uh, and especially people that are just finishing up building their own house and have been through the trauma of what it takes to build a house yourself. These guys are almost done pouring concrete. Everything seems to be going really well, but I guess we won't know until it's over. Stress is great with this one. <laughs> Everything worked out, babe. Yeah, it turned out okay. We're out of concrete, but here's a city inspector probably coming to tell us we're doing something wrong. Oh, they, I think these are the water guys. Hello. What's up, guys? How are you guys doing? Let's start moving fast now. Yes. Yeah, well, we're excited. Now it's just us. We can't count on other people to do the work, so we're we'll <laughs> enough fast to go. Oh, yeah. Everything out before <laughs> snow flies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Hopefully, a long time from now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're hoping for a late winter. Could, it could be this weekend though. You yeah. think on Saturday? I don't know. We've there, there's been winter times where we've had it early, but oh boy. Not we'll get ready then. <laughs> yeah, cross your fingers for an yeah, Indian, seriously. Indian winter, right? <laughs> All right, guys. Good to take see you. Take care. <laughs> To say that this has been a roller coaster of emotions today would be an understatement. I'm excited. It's just uh, now that like the stress has come down, I like feel sick. 
because I've just had so much adrenaline and worry and everything. Also, we didn't have time to eat breakfast this morning, so I think it's time for us to break and go eat some lunch, have a drink. What do you think? Some water, some shade, maybe a small panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> I've been having a large panic attack all day, so we're gonna go break for lunch. Wow, it's so much easier to walk across this when you know you're not about to die if you fall off. Yeah, but don't fall that way. I've never had a concrete anything poured before, <laughs> so this is a really big, exciting moment for me. And we're trying to think of ways to commemorate milestones throughout this build, time capsules, time capsules, and all different ways to to just like look back and like have a marker of, oh, that was a cool moment in life. I think this is a cool moment in life. <laughs> We're gonna write our names in the slab. <laughs> you want me to do it? It doesn't look good. <laughs> I could never settle down. The year the world fell apart. 2020. <laughs> Hopefully in a hundred years, in 2,120, <laughs> someone will see that in our slab and they'll say, wow, look at how old this is. TNA, we're here. And it's still a perfect house because it was built so perfectly <laughs> that everything is just in great shape because Trent and Allie built it. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go uh, check in on the basement, see how the slab up there is doing, and then I think we're gonna take off for the day, but. Let's go double check on all this stuff. Too far away from my hometown. This is like snowshoes, but for concrete. <laughs> Knee shoes. It seriously is, huh? We need some of these on our property in the snow so we can get around. No cervezas hoy. Lo siento. You're welcome. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Thank you. Wow. Oh, those guys have done an incredible job. We are so close yeah. to getting this house yes. almost framed. <laughs> and let me just say, I know I said that I was like really grateful for the excavator. I am extremely grateful for the concrete guys. Not only do those guys work super hard, but they are making it look so beautiful. I'm, I'm so excited to come back up here on Monday and just see it completely finished. And honestly, so. it's like just in the nick of time. We were talking to a couple other neighbors that said it's forecasting to snow on Saturday. <sighs> we are cutting it close. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we're going to get out of here for today, but we hope you guys enjoyed coming along on this adventure, getting everything backfilled, getting the final concrete poured. And on Monday, we can start framing, baby. <gasps> It's all coming together. As long as it doesn't snow on yeah. Saturday, that would be detrimental and it would make Monday a huge pain in the butt, but we're prepared for whatever's gonna happen. So hopefully you guys are prepared too. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to show us by giving us a big thumbs up on the video. Consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. Thank you again to Moonshade for sponsoring today's video. Click the link in our description to pick one up for yourself. And we'll see you guys on the next Adios. one. Adios. Resting on the myth of old. Stories have been told